All right. Uh, as we look at the schedule, of course, the one thing that stands out for 2018, Steve, is a trip to USC or USC coming to Austin after the trip to the Coliseum last year in which Texas, a um, uh, bit of an unknown at that point with uh, Tom Herman taking over the loss to Maryland and not knowing how long it was going to take him to uh, get his system in place for the, the players to take hold and, and um, really all of it to come together, acquitted themselves well against uh, what turned out to be one of the 10 best teams in the nation in, in the polls at the end of the regular season. So that was a good win. As you look ahead to 2018, what stands out? Because obviously the Big 12 is no mystery. Everybody plays everyone. So it's more a, a look at, well, who comes to Austin versus where does Texas have to go here this fall? Texas will enter with a lot of hype again, as they seem to most off seasons. And this year, I finally see another 2-0 start. I know they started 2-0 a couple years ago after beating Notre Dame, but they quickly crashed and finished 5-7. and I see another 2-0 start. They start the year in Maryland against the Terrapins. That is a revenge game for the Longhorns. Looking back at the 2017 schedule, that's the one game you can scratch your head on is how Texas gave up 51 to Maryland at home. The defense didn't look like themselves. It was just a disaster start to the Tom Herman era. I know the Terrapins have recruited very well, but we haven't really seen the results on the field. Terrapins haven't had a winning record in it. I don't know, maybe the first year they were in the Big Ten, but it's been a while since Maryland's fielded a really good team. So I think I see Texas going into Landover and taking an easy win there. Uh, and then they play Tulsa in the second game. Tulsa's a home game. Her Golden Hurricane, I mean, they had a great offense last year, but they also went 2-10. and 10, So that should be another easy win for Texas, returning to Daryl K. Royal Stadium for that one. And then the third game is the one everyone's going to have their eyes on. If Texas is 2-0, maybe the college game day crew comes. It, it's been since 2009, since Herb Street and Corso and friends have been to Austin. And this is a game that a lot of people will get hyped on. It's a re, another rematch of the 05 National Championship and a rematch of last year's double overtime thriller against USC, except this time Texas gets home field advantage. And Texas's home field advantage will actually mean a lot more this year because they just brought in a new athletic director, Chris Del Conte. And this was huge news on campus recently as he scrapped this wristband policy where students could only sit in certain sections. And that was barring people from going to the games. You'd see empty student sections at Texas games. So with the new athletic director promoting students to go in with general admission, it's going to be a packed house. Texas is finally going to have some more home field advantage on its side, more fans there. And USC is coming to town. So that's going to be a big one. USC will probably lose Darnell to the draft. So I'm going to say this one's a toss-up game. You can never count out the Trojans. I mean, Darnold shined as a freshman. Whoever they're bringing in next year may also have good year at quarterback. But USC game is going to be a tough one. Then they follow up with TCU. TCU, I will say that's another toss-up. They'll win one of those two games, but then you have to look as they haven't come close against TCU in years. I think the last four years they've lost by a combined score of 153-33 to 33 to TCU two games in Austin, two games in Fort Worth. So those will be the season-defining games, I believe. And the two after that, honestly, at Kansas State versus Oklahoma. Those are two games away from home. Playing at Kansas State's always tough. Bill Snyder, he'll bring in some walk-ons, some junior college players, and you'll keep winning with him every single year. You can't explain it, but that's what Bill Snyder does. And they've always caused fits for Texas. I could see that going forward. Red River rivalry, even with Baker Mayfield gone, I think Oklahoma has a great shot in that. That will, will probably be maybe a couple losses there for Texas, but the schedule eases up, especially after. I mean, later in the season, they have Baylor and Kansas, a stretch against West Virginia, Texas Tech, Iowa State, where they should be able to win those, and a game at o Oklahoma State, a team that lost a lot of seniors in this past year, Mason Rudolph, Ramon Richards, a lot of players on that Cowboys team. So that should be a more winnable game for Texas. It's not an easy schedule. It's not a very, very difficult schedule, but it's pretty challenging, and Texas should get, I'd say, eight, maybe nine wins if you factor in a bowl game against it. I'll say nine and four record, which 
would show signs of progress from Tom Herman era in the Tom Herman era. He'd boost the win total in the program for the second straight year. And that is exactly what I think these Texas fans just want to see at this moment. Yeah, it's a formidable schedule. No question about that. Uh, I certainly credit Texas, uh, unlike most uh, teams across the country, scheduling two power fives. So we're seeing that a little bit more recently in the last few years where teams like Texas and other teams across the country are scheduling two power fives, but they're still in the minority. So it's a very uh, difficult um, task considering the nine conference games. So the SEC and the ACC only play eight, the Pac-12, the Big Ten, and the Big 12 play nine conference games. So if you're going to play two power fives, that means there's only one other game. So you only get one light touch to a certain extent. And uh, even the group of five uh, matchup against Tulsa is nothing to uh, look past. So there's no give me on this schedule. Obviously, Baylor and Kansas are the lightweights in the Big 12, and uh, I, I wouldn't expect that to, to remain the case in Waco for too long under Matt Rule, but they'll probably struggle again here in 2018. Of course, Oklahoma's at the top, but losing Baker Mayfield and, and a number of playmakers across the board and the offensive line to a certain extent. I would not expect Oklahoma to be quite as good, and Texas, of course, took them within a score uh, this past season. So that's a possible upset right there. Then you've just got a glut of games between teams that are rather comparable. Oklahoma State, Kansas State, West Virginia teams uh, that would be in that, I don't know, 15 to 30 tier nationally, 35, something in that range. So uh, Texas could certainly pull off a couple upsets and, and be right there um, vying for a 10-win season or you know, something in that eight to nine win range is certainly conceivable as well. All right, uh, Steve Helwick um, joining us. Uh, he uh, covers uh, Mac football for SB Nation. You can join him on Hustle Belt. Uh, also, um, of course, on Twitter, just look up Steve Helwick uh, talking Texas football here. Steve joins us from uh, TSTV. It's the campus uh, media center for the University of Texas. Uh, Steve, we appreciate you stopping by talking Texas football. Thank you very much.